begin the mermaid, I start out with my first sketch layer, laying out my basic shapes, blocking in general guidelines. I love keeping my pencil lines light at first. It makes it so much easier later so you're not having to erase big dark lines or divots in the paper. And that really is the joy of sketching because it doesn't have to be perfect at first. And you can just keep refining until you get something that you're liking. I'm taking the lines that I love and refining those erasing things, just refining till I get a more organized sketch in preparation for my line art. Once my sketch is satisfactory, I move on to outlining. So I'm using the Micron outliners for this line art and mostly in a size 05. I love these pens, they're so smooth, there's no bleeding and they're waterproof. But before I do that, I take my kneadable eraser and lighten my whole sketch. And it just causes less work later for me. And I can focus on the lines that I want to keep in there in my clean line art. Make sure you check out the description box below because I have all the materials I used in this sketch down there. As I continue on with my line art, I purpose to take extra care to keep my hand relaxed in order to create those smooth, long lines. There's so many S shapes and C curves in doing mermaids, which is part of the fun because they're so flowing, but you just have to make sure, you know, turn your paper when necessary in order to get those angles best and just keep flowing and a relaxed wrist and it will turn out better. Once the line art is complete, I switch to watercolors and begin applying a basic skin tone. Later on, I will move on and use some Copic skin tone markers over the watercolor just to create a deeper hue, although I don't do this in every illustration. So here I am adding some pink to the details of her lips and cheeks. And as you can see, I add some skin tone over her face again to make sure it's wet before I blend in the color of the pink to her cheeks. I find that this really helps it just blend easier and I can move it and dab it around until I get the shade that I'm looking for. I love watercoloring mermaid's hair. There's so many different creative ways you can take it. In this illustration, I leave all of her hair down and just kind of flowing freely in the water. So I begin by blocking in this burnt umber brown color. And where I want it to look darker, I add more watercolor paint. And where it's lighter, I add just more water mixed into the paint. Just blocking this color in until I get it completely filled in. Once I finish coloring in her hair, I switch to my detail brush. This is my Winsor & Newton detail brush in a size one. I love this brush because it helps me get more controlled accuracy around her face, thinner lines, and it really just helps those fun wispy hairs come out from all over. I also layer some darker tones on top of the hair that we already colored in. This creates varying textures and colors, just making it look more alive and flowing. Once I finish watercoloring your hair, I'm going to move back on to her skin tone. I will take my Copic alcohol-based markers. These are my skin tone palette. I'm going to begin in the shade E00. It's the lightest tone that they have, and begin layering these tones on top of each other to create a deeper hue. And like I said earlier, I don't do this in every illustration, but sometimes if I want deeper color, more blendable, I use these and it just creates a very realistic skin. As I began using my Copic markers right here, I realized that I had completely forgotten 
to paint her stomach. So I quickly whipped up some more skin tone in my watercolor paint and threw that on to have it dry while I worked on her face. Now, we're moving on to my absolute favorite part of this whole watercoloring process. I am beginning her gradient tail with a dark purple. As I move down, about a third of the way down, I switch to a ultramarine blue and mix it in. Working quickly, because my watercolor is wet, I would like it to stay wet because I'm going to sprinkle this alcohol on it to create a super cool, scaly looking texture. And it works best when applied over wet watercolor. Now I'm returning to my Winsor & Newton detail brush to create kind of a striped pattern on the tail. I am taking a shade darker purple than the flat color we already have down and kind of just letting my brush flow to create these long striped lines which turned out so cool. After this is done, I take my gold watercolor palette, which I absolutely love. I use this in so many illustrations. You can have a more pigmented gold and it can create a darker sparkle or like what I'm doing now, I'm mixing more water into a lighter champagne gold and creating a really fun look for her top around the sides of her tail and I also do some details above her eyes and some strands in her hair. Okay, so once this is done, I take a larger brush and create a light aqua wash. I let my brush flow with this one and kind of let the watercolor go where it will. I don't have any specific place I put this in, just kind of around her to create this beautiful underwater oceany sea vibe. Okay, so now we're getting so close to the end and I love to get into the last little details that really make our watercolor mermaid shine. So I'm taking this white gel pen and creating this highlighted scaly look on top of her tail. This really makes it pop and brings out those mermaid fish scale vibes. I'm also putting these dots wherever I want like a little highlight or sparkle and putting some strands in her hair to create a really unique highlight. Once I'm done with the white, I move on to a gold gel pen to finish her earrings off with. I love using these gel pens at the end to create these little details that a paintbrush can't really get. As you see here, I love to outline my wherever the water's touching with some white paint. Usually I do this with a paint pen, but my paint pen was empty for this video, so I took out a little jar of Copic white paint that I had and that did the job. So the last thing I did was add these little aqua bubbles floating around her. This just kind of added to the whole underwater oceany sea vibe that we're going for and I was really pleased with how it turned out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys were inspired to go create your own mermaids. They are so fun to watercolor and I hope to see you in the next video.